talk about cost, let's start with a couple of definitions. Okay? Basically, once again, let's back up. Where are we coming from? I talked about what the firm's decision is the firm has to maximize profits, which is revenues minus costs. Okay? So we have to ask what are costs if we're going to make this profit maximizing decision. Well, costs are going to have a few components. The first component that costs, costs are going to have really two major components. Fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs and variable costs. Okay. Fixed costs are the cost of inputs that cannot be varied in the short run. Remember I said that the short run is defined as a period over time in which only some inputs can vary. Well, fixed costs are the cost of those inputs that can't vary in the short run. Okay? Variable costs, so that's like capital in the short run. Variable costs are the cost of goods that can vary in the short run. That's like labor. Okay? So, and total costs, total costs is the sum of these two. So total costs equals fixed costs plus variable costs. Okay. Finally, another definition that's important is marginal costs, which is the change in costs with a change in output. So the marginal costs is just like, remember, everything is, um, you know, I think in terms of marginal decision making in this course. So the marginal costs, the change in costs, or the change in, actually, it should be a little Q. Uh, the change in a firm's costs with the change in the firm's output, okay, is marginal costs. And then finally, um, average cost is just what it sounds like. Average cost, average cost is, just, uh, is just C over Q. It's just the average. So there's the marginal average cost is, is basically average cost, the average over the whole set of goods produced. Marginal cost is the cost of that next unit of production. OK? So those are our key definitions. Now with those in mind, let's ask, how do we get costs? And the answer is we get them from the production function. Once we know a production function, we can derive costs. OK? So if we have some production function, Q equals F of L and K, OK? Then we can say that the cost of producing Q is equal to um, the cost of producing Q uh, is equal to F of R of WL plus RK, where W is the wage rate or the rate you pay per unit of labor, and R is the rental rate or the rate you pay per unit of capital. Okay? Now, let me just pause here for a second and talk about cap price and capital. It's easy to think about the cost of an hour of labor, it's the wage you pay for the hour. It's harder to think about the cost of a unit of capital because we buy the machines, right? So how do we think about the cost? I'm going to cover this later in the course. For now, imagine all machines are rented. Okay? Imagine you rent every machine you use. Okay? And think of R as the rental price of that unit of capital. Okay? So with buildings, it makes sense. Firms often rent the buildings they're in. Think of R as the rental price of that unit of building or that unit of machine. We'll come back later to see why that's, a more, why that's a sensible way to think about it. The key point is, the, the reason we have to do this is the wage is a flow measure, right? Every hour I pay you a new wage. If I use the cost of buying the machine, that would be a stock measure. So you couldn't really compare it to wages. So we want to use a flow measure. The flow measure is what we have to pay every period to rent the machine. Now, in the short run, okay, capital is fixed, okay? So in the short run, the fixed costs are fixed costs are R K bar, okay? That's our fixed costs. The rental rate times the fixed amount of capital in the short run. And our variable costs are W times L, which is a function of Q. That is, the more you produce, the more labor you use in the short run, okay? So total costs in the short run, short run total costs, are RK bar plus WL of Q. K is not a function of Q because K is fixed in the short run. But the amount of labor used is a function of how much you produce. OK? This implies that the marginal cost, the key concept we want to work with, marginal cost 
which is the derivative of total cost with respect to quantity. So dc dq is going to be equal to uh, w, or let's do, let's do it in deltas because we're not doing calculus here. Delta c delta q is going to be w times delta l over delta q. That's going to be the marginal cost. The marginal cost, so I'm just differentiating the total cost function, is going to be the wage times delta L delta Q. So the marginal cost of producing the next unit is going to be how much labor I have to use to produce the next unit times the wage I pay per unit of labor. So the marginal cost is the wage over the marginal product of labor. The marginal product of labor is delta Q delta L. So wage over the marginal product of labor is the marginal cost. So think about this intuitively. What we're saying is the cost of the next unit of production is declining with the marginal product of labor. It sort of makes sense. The more productive is a worker, okay, the less expensive is producing the next unit. The less productive is the next worker, the more expensive is producing the next unit. So there's an inverse relationship between the marginal cost and the marginal product, where the wage is the, is, is the constant um, that, that uh, scales that relationship. Okay? So basically, when, the, uh, when, when workers are very, very high marginal product, then it's going to be cheap to produce the next unit. When workers have a low marginal product, it's going to be expensive to produce the next unit. And that's going to depend on what you actually have to pay, what you actually have to pay the worker.